Hi everyone, it's Kim. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Today we are going to do some meal prep. And I've got a couple of new things. I've got a couple of old things. I got a couple of, I had to go old school with things. So hopefully you enjoy a few things on here and hopefully you get uh, some good ideas with some other things that you know maybe you haven't prepped in a while so let me show you what I did we're gonna start off with my watermelon and I did watermelon and cantaloupe for my fruit snacks this week so don't forget to give me a thumbs up for today's video leave me some comments below and with that said let's go ahead and jump into meal prep Okay, so I have myself set up here because I am going to make something new. I'm going to attempt to make some uh, strawberry chocolate chip protein muffins. So what we're going to need is we're going to need two cups of water. Of course, I'm going to spray my silicone liners with some cooking spray. I need one cup of the Kodiak mix. I need two scoops of the Devotion or any type of vanilla protein powder. So just today I'm going to use my Devotion. I'm trying to use this one up so that I can you know, I already have another one, so I don't want to open the other one until I've used this one. This one's really good for baking. So I'm going to use one, two scoops, sorry, two scoops of that one, and then one teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm just going to go ahead and start mixing this together, and I'll take you along in that process. So hang tight, let me get my bowl, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add in that two cups of water. going to add in one cup of my Kodiak Power Cakes mix. And I contemplated adding like fresh strawberries or um, even extra chocolate chips, but this is the first time I'm using this mixture, so I'm just going to use it as is and then we'll see if I should tweak it next time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add in one heaping teaspoon of baking powder just because I want these to rise a little bit more and then I'm going to go ahead and scoop out two scoops of my protein powder. That's one and this is two. Now if I get 12 of these I think it's going to be one smart point each. I'm going to have to double check this Kodiak Cakes um, protein mix to see if it's comparable to the chocolate if they have the same the same points per you know per half cup so I'll double check that but um I'll let you know by the time these are done baking how these you know how the points come out on these and this points will be for all programs whether you're on blue purple or green all right, so I've got that mixed in. Now what I'm gonna do is anytime I make this, I always let this batter sit for a little while just to kind of let it thicken up a little bit. So we're gonna let it sit for about, I don't know, three to five minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, so if you look, look how much thicker that is. So I just, like I said, I just think it's a good trick to know, just wait a few minutes. And if you think it's too thin, just give it a couple of minutes and then it will thicken right up. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray my little silicone cups. And I could do these in muffin tins, but my husband is downstairs working in the basement and I really can't get to the area where I have my extra baking stuff. I have everything down there just out of the way. So instead of bothering him, I'm just gonna use what I have up here. So that's why I put the the tin foil down so that I don't make a huge mess. Okay, so I've got that done. I'm gonna go ahead and start filling these muffin cups. I'll come back. I'm just gonna move these off here, put them back here. 
just not sure if that'll with the with the cooking spray <laughs> on the um oh my colors are off a little bit so with my cooking spray on that piece of aluminum foil I just want to make sure that it doesn't you know I don't know get too heated or burned or whatever the case may be so you guys get it right okay so as you can see I still have batter left and I still have I don't have any of those size, um, I guess, muffin tins left. I'm trying to get you a good angle there. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my bigger ones. I'll fill them, I don't know, half full or something and see how that goes. But I should spray them first, right? Okay, so let's see if I can get at least three more out of this. These are definitely going to be one smart point. I did double check. And this one has the same exact, um, it's six points for a half cup of the chocolate, and it's six points for a half cup of this one. So oh, I think I'm just going to fill these two. I think that's good. So I'm going to call them one smart point, because normally I should only get 12, and I've got 14 here. So I'm going to go ahead and get these in a 350 degree oven. I'm thinking maybe... 15, 20 minutes, I'll let you know of the exact amount of time when I pull them out. Okay, here are my muffins. I got them nice and golden brown. I did stick a, a toothpick in them. They're good to go. I did keep these ones in a little bit longer. I did these for 23 minutes. You could probably do them less if you didn't want them as golden brown. So I'm going to go ahead and give these a try because again, one smart point, can't wait. So I'll give these a try. I'll let you know my thoughts. Okay, they have a really good flavor. I think that I could have cooked them at a lower temperature maybe and let them cook a little bit longer. So make sure you test these for doneness. Um, they were done, but I think they could have been done just a little bit more in the middle. My toothpick came out clean, but on another note, I plan on warming these up in my microwave or in my air fryer, so probably the microwave. So whatever is, you know, not the texture I like will be perfectly fine once I heat them back up. So. I'm going to say that this, um, the strawberry chocolate chip, pretty darn good. So I'll have these just for a snack throughout the week when I'm craving something sweet. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and peel my boiled eggs. Um, <laughs> yes, my Instant Pot was downstairs on the shelf and I couldn't get to it, so I went old school. I cooked my eggs on the stovetop. So if you do that, I just put my eggs in a pan of cold water. <laughs> I had to think about it for a minute because it's been a while since I've done this. And then I let it come to a boil. I set a timer for 10 minutes and then I just turned it off. And then I just, um, I think I let them sit on the stove for a little while longer than I probably should have. They're sure they're fine. But I just um, cooled them down in some cold water. So let me know in the comments if you store your eggs, your boiled eggs, in the fridge, peeled or unpeeled. Um, I typically will peel mine, but I think that just to, just to save some time today, I'm just going to go ahead and leave them in the shell, put them in a container, and just throw them right in the fridge, and then, um, but I'm just curious, I'm just curious to know what you do, so um, let me know in the comments. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and peel some potatoes for mashed potatoes, and I'm going to go ahead and slice some potatoes up for some oven baked fries later in the week. So um, <laughs> you see, I'm cleaning and I'm packaging as I go along today. So I'm just trying to like keep up with everything that, you know, as I'm doing it or moving along or whatever you want to call it. I'm tongue tied today. So potatoes, uh, one bowl for peeled potatoes, one bowl just for the wedge potatoes, I guess. Maybe I'll cut some up for fries this week. Maybe I'll do that. All right, so let me go ahead and get these washed, and then I will come back. Um, I'm sure you don't want to watch me cut potatoes, so I'm just going to peel them. I'm going to grab my handy-dandy potato peeler, and then, yeah, maybe we'll speed through it. Just hang tight.
so those are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and store this one in the fridge, covered in water with a lid on it, and they will not turn brown if you do that. So I'll have these ready to go for a couple of meals during the week. And then these here are gonna be for dinner tonight, so I'm gonna make mashed potatoes with these. So potatoes are done. Let me see what else I have on my list to do. All right, next up, I'm going to go ahead and do like a quiche type egg cheese and veggie bake I don't even know what to call it but I'm gonna go ahead and shred my cheese um, you can see I have some Gruyere cheese back there so I'm gonna shred my cheese and hint hint um, I just ordered a new shredder attachment for my KitchenAid mixer so I'm gonna be bringing that baby upstairs so that I can start playing with that so now that I have my pasta attachment and the shredder attachment, I think that I'm going to use it a lot more. So I'm going to just make it a permanent home for a little while and see how that goes. I've been trying to keep my counters clean, but I think that if I have a reason to use it, they'll, you know, it, it won't be so bad sitting on the counter. So I just put frozen veggies. Um, I just sprayed. The only thing I've done is sprayed this. So I put frozen veggies in here. You can see they're still frozen. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the microwave to get those to thaw just a little bit. I'm gonna shred my cheese, I'm gonna crack my eggs, and we're gonna throw this together. So I'll just kind of give you a little sneak peeks here as we're doing that so that you don't have to watch me throw this whole thing together. The seasonings that I'm gonna be using today, um, I have pepper, salt, and some of this Mrs. Dash's Table Blend. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this together. I'll kind of check in with you as I'm, you know, everybody knows how to shred cheese, so <laughs> wish I had that attachment already, but I'm gonna, do it by hand and I'll come back at you before I throw it together so hang tight okay so as I get started with shredding the cheese um let's see if that yeah, maybe that helps a little bit I just wanted to let you know that if you want to shred cheese easier just to go ahead and put it in the freezer for you know maybe 10-15 minutes because it does shred easier when you do it that way um it's kind of hard when you have these cheeses that aren't I mean, it's a hard cheese, but it's not like super hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this shredded. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and shred the whole thing. And then I'll just have it for later so I can just keep it in the fridge. So I'll continue shredding and then I'll come back and show you the next piece. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and gonna move this over here and just use this as my garbage. Let's go ahead and get these eggs cracked. And if you ever get bored, practice cracking eggs with one hand because it's a, once you learn how to do it, you seriously cannot go back to cracking them with two hands and it just makes it really hard. You just kind of, the coordination is off. So I've been doing this since I've been a teenager and they just crack so easy. So I'm going to go ahead and get these scrambled up, throw some seasoning in it, and then we're going to put this together. I decided I'm gonna go ahead and season up the vegetables too because I always forget this part and these vegetables are so bland if you don't throw anything on it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some of, like I said, that table blend on here. And then I think I'm just gonna add a little salt. I know, I know, salt. So I've got my eggs scrambled here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour these over the top. And I, I need to season these too, don't I? What am I thinking? All right, let me throw some of this in here, some salt, some pepper. Get a little ahead of myself some days. All right. I don't know if it makes a difference if you season it, and scramble it, or if you just season it once it's all on there. But we're just going to go ahead and throw this on top. I know I should do it this way so you guys can see. And you want to be careful not to fill it too full because of the fact that this will expand in your oven and you don't want to make a huge mess. So I think that's the perfect amount. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this into a 350 degree oven. I'm thinking 25, 30 minutes. I'll let you know when I pull it out. But I'm going to wait before I throw the cheese on until after this is baked for a little bit because the cheese, I just, I mean, you could throw the cheese in the middle, but I like the cheese on top because to me it gets a better flavor. So if you want to make it easy on yourself, you can mix all this together and just kind of bake it all together. But again, that, that cheese on top, yum. So I'm going to get this in the oven and then I will come back and show you what it looks like. I'll, I'll probably show you once we stop and put the cheese on. So hang tight, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, 
I almost forgot. I am going to go ahead and measure out my cheese so that I can get this in the fridge. So if you use one ounce of cheese, it will be four smart points for one ounce of cheese. If I use two ounces of cheese, it will be nine smart points for the whole thing, but once I separate it into four pieces, which is what I'm planning on having, um, I'm going to count that as two smart points each. So this will be my cheese for the um, egg bake casserole frittata concoction. And then I'm gonna go ahead and store this, the rest of this in the fridge for later use. So I just wanted to share that little piece with you just in case you were wondering. So that's where we're at, so stay tuned. I just got that in the oven, so I'll be back. Okay, so this is after 25 minutes, so I figured it was a good time to stop it, and then we will go ahead and put on our cheese. Let's try to get that all around so I can get some cheesy goodness with every bite. will melt I'm sure and spread out a little bit more but I think that looks pretty good all right so we're gonna get this back in the oven I'm gonna put it back in the oven for another maybe five or ten minutes so <laughs> before somebody a l e x a disturbed us um, I'm gonna get this back in the oven for probably five to ten minutes I'll let you know at the end how long I actually left it in there for and we're gonna finish off this one Okay, this one is now done. I'm gonna let this cool off. I just pulled it out of the oven. I left it in there about 10 more minutes to melt the cheese and finish cooking through. Um, smells amazing. amazing. If you have not had Gruyere cheese before, the smell is out of this world. So the taste is too. I mean, it's just so good. All right, so I'm going to let this cool off and then I'm going to cut this up. Four pieces seems like a lot. I mean, it seems like, I don't know, I think I'm, I think I'm going to splurge four pieces it is. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up, and then um, I'll show you what's next. Okay, I know it's a little loud, but um, I just wanted to show you, I decided to cut this into six pieces and call it one point each because of the fact that they were kind of big. When I looked at it and cut it in half, I'm like, well, those are way too big. So six pieces of how I'm going to go, and it must smell really good because, look, this camo was smelling it. How huh, can oh, Yes, that's what you're doing, so... She's cracking me up today. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this away in some containers so that I can pull that out and have that for breakfast this week. And also, I think that you guys have been seeing my iced coffee. I have this, it's been in the background. I noticed it when I was doing my editing, so I wanted to show you this as well. I think I made this, I might have a video for this. I'll show you, but I have a, um, I think I can get this off, hold on. So there is a filter inside here. So it's just my cold brew coffee. Actually, I'm gonna pop this right in the sink if I can get over here without making a mess. But um, now I have my cold brew coffee just ready to go. I just I just put the coffee in there, let it sit on the counter, and then it's good to go. So actually, I think I might just make myself an iced coffee beans. How um, I think I deserve it for all my hard work. So our dough is still going. I will come back and show you that, and then after that, we will wrap today's video up. So hang tight, and I'll be back. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is, actually the last thing, that the last two things, I guess I should say, that I'm going to do is mix up some pizza dough so I can use it later on in the week for dinners. Now, I'm going to make a regular pizza dough in my bread maker, which I'll show you after this for my husband and my granddaughter. But for myself, I'm gonna mix up some two ingredient dough and I'm gonna mix up enough for two pizzas for myself. And if I'm super hungry that night, I'll just make both. And if I'm not, then I will save. I'll just have one for now and then one for lunch, you know, later in the week or something. So I'll make that decision later. But I'm just like I said, if I'm gonna mix it, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it. So in this measuring cup, I have just shy of a cup of the Faye Greek yogurt. Um, this is the fat-free, just plain Greek yogurt. And then I am using the self-rising gold metal flour. I have a cup of that, just a full cup of that. Now, 
This is your two ingredient dough. This is your basics for your two ingredient dough. You always want to go shire on the yogurt because of the fact that otherwise your your dough's too wet, then you're going to have to add more flour, then you're going to add more points. So always just go shy right off the bat. Now since I'm making this into pizza dough, I'm going to mix up my own um, recipe here. I'm going to add a little bit of baking powder just to make it rise a little bit more. That's just something I'm doing. It's not necessarily any type of recipe I've seen. And I thought I would flavor my dough, so I'm going to go ahead and add some pink Himalayan sea salt. And then also put some Italian seasoning in the dough. You know what? I think I'm going to grab some, um, some. I think I might grab garlic salt instead of the pink salt. Maybe I'll just grab, I'm going to grab garlic powder. So hang tight. I'm going to um, grab my garlic powder, then we're going to mix this together. Okay, so in our bowl, I'm just going to go ahead and throw in my yogurt. Top of that, I'm going to add in my flour. Just going to throw the whole cup in there. Going to throw in just a little sprinkle of the baking powder. Guess I should show you that. Not really measuring, just kind of throwing a little in there. It's funny, my ice trays always fill when I'm filming. I mean, never fails. All right, I'm just gonna throw some salt in. Um, I just have regular Meyer brand garlic powder here, so I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that in. And I'm just basically flavoring up that dough. I mean, I don't know about you, but I like my dough to be flavorful. And then I'm gonna add in some Italian seasoning, just because it sounded good. So, regular, <laughs> honestly, probably Dollar Tree Italian seasoning. I'm not very particular on my spices, so I just grab whatever I see when I see it because that's when I think about the time that I need it. So, all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix this up and I'll cut back once that forms the dough so that you don't have to sit here and watch me mixing all this up. That would be kind of boring. Okay, so once this gets to this point, I always like to just kind of clean off my spoon and then go in with my hands because that's how you're gonna get your dough to come together. Hopefully I'm still, yep, I think I'm still good. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start to incorporate this together. Now, if you find your dough's a little dry, you can always add just a touch of water. It does not take much, but I think that if I work with this a little bit more, it should come together. Otherwise, I'm just gonna add just a touch of water. Yeah, I think I'm going to add just a touch of water for this. All right, that should be good. That's probably a teaspoon of water. And that was plenty. All right, so that does it. That gets my dough together. It just takes a couple of minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this into a bowl and just let it rest in my fridge until I'm ready to use it later in the week. So that's it. Pizza dough ready. I'm just gonna shape that into a ball, pop it into a bowl, and then when I'm ready, I'll cut it in half, I'll weigh it, cut it in half, and then I will have it. Now this dough, just for my crust, it's gonna be three points just for the dough. I mean, so that's not really bad at all. So, all right, stay tuned. I'll show you how I make the dough for my husband. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start layering the ingredients inside my bread maker here. And what we're going to need is we're going to need some salt. And I need one quarter teaspoon of salt, seven to eight ounces of water, which I have back here. We're going to need two tablespoons of olive oil, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of sugar, and two teaspoons of active dry yeast. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll try to get you guys a good angle so you can see how I'm layering in there. But basically, you just put everything in and then hit the dough button. So it doesn't take too long at all. Let me see if I can. Um, oh, that's probably that's probably pretty good. So it's said to add in seven to eight ounces of water. I'm just going to go ahead and add in eight ounces because that's normally what I put in when I'm making my normal bread. So I have that in there. 
I'm gonna go ahead and get the olive oil next because I like to put my olive oil in, or actually all my wet ingredients in at the bottom. I don't know why, just it's just something I've always done. All right, so two tablespoons of olive oil going in. Call for one quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna throw in some pink Himalayan sea salt because that's one I had out. I'm gonna go ahead and dump in, oh, I'll put the sugar in next. Two teaspoons of sugar. I have a tablespoon in this thing, so I'm just gonna go shy on that and dump that in. I'm gonna put in our flour next. See how quick and easy this is? And then I'm gonna dump in two teaspoons of active dry yeast. I just keep mine in a jar in the fridge because it just makes it easier to, to find it for one and also easier just to dish out when I need it. So that's it. I'm going to do my settings now. So let's see if you guys can see that. Hold on a second. Sorry if it's jaded, if it's jumpy here. So I'm gonna hit my menu until it gets to number seven. And then I'm going to hit start. That's it. So it's gonna do its thing. And then in an hour, I'll have pizza dough. So I'm just gonna let that sit on the counter out of my way and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Oh, do you guys wanna see what it's doing? Hold on. See if I can pull you off without jiggling you too much. The paddle in there is just going to keep going around until it starts getting together and then at a certain point it stops and then rises and then does something else but yeah it's, it's like you just let it go and do its thing so all right so I will be back okay it's now done and this is what it looks like so look it's nice fluffy dough so I'm gonna pull this out and <laughs> I probably should have not let it rise but I'm gonna pull it out and go ahead and shape it into a ball so that I can use it later or maybe I should shape it into a pizza pie. I don't know how I'm going to use it, but that's our dough. So, all right, so I'm going to get this done. I'm going to wrap this. <laughs> it fell because I touched it. Okay, so what I did is I just pulled it onto a, a, a plate that I had sprayed with cooking spray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shape this into a ball. I'm going to put it in the fridge and then when I'm ready to use it, I'll pull it out and shape it. So <laughs> I wasn't really sure until I got it out of the pan. So, all right, so with that said, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you found some tricks or something new that you want to incorporate in your weekly meal prep. And with that said, I will see you next video.